Earlier this week, I was at one of my favorite cabinet shops, picking out a wood stain for one of the projects I'm working on in Reno. And I got tons of questions about how to pick out a wood stain. And so I wanted to share some of my tips and tricks because just like picking out the perfect white paint, Picking out the perfect wood stain can feel a little bit intimidating and tricky. Sometimes wood will turn a crazy color when you stain it something. And through trial and error, I've learned quite a bit over the past couple years about how to pick out a wood stain. So today I'm going to give you all of my tips and tricks so that you can easily pick out the perfect wood stain for your home. If this is your first time here, my name is Chloe. I write the blog Box with Avenue. I share everyday tips for simple living, and I've got lots more interior design ideas on my blog at boxofavenue.com. So let's go ahead and get started. When you first start out a project, whatever you're going to be staining, be it your doors, or maybe it's a furniture piece, or maybe you're picking out stain for your entire house, you want to consider the species of the wood. What type of wood will you be working with? There are so many different species, and many of them just have natural undertones. Some of them have a natural pink undertone. Some of them have natural cooler or warmer undertone. So do a little bit of research on the species of wood that you're going to be working with and figure out what natural undertones it already has. Once you've figured out the natural undertones of the wood, you want to consider what undertones or what kind of colors you want to incorporate in your house or within the project. When I first start on a project and I know that I'm going to be mixing lots of different shades of wood, I always try and keep the undertone the same. So you can have lots of different shades of wood in a house, but I think what's really important is that you keep the same undertone. When you first start out, take an inventory of all the different woods you have in your house. Even take a picture of them if they're in different locations throughout the house and see what the common thread is and see if you have a common undertone. Then you can play with that undertone and use different shades within it. I have this example here for this project. This is the flooring sample that we're going to be using. This is the first thing that we picked up. This is something that the client was really drawn to and really loved. There are a lot of different shades of wood here, but the undertone is still the same. So in your house, if you have many different types of wood or you want to have different shades of wood, you can absolutely do that, but it's important not to mix the undertones. So you don't want to have yellow and blue and red undertones all in one space because that will feel a little bit off. So if you're mixing different shades, you want to pick one undertone. This has a little bit of a gray undertone, but it does have some warmth coming through. So I'll stick to the different shades that are already within this wood. So this is a piece of white oak, and we have had some vanities built out of white oak, and the shelving and the mantles are being made out of white oak. And so you can see that the oak naturally is a little bit more yellow than what we have here. Oftentimes, if you just steal white oak right out the gate, you don't stain it or anything, it will turn a little bit pink. And so I always like to cool it down with a little bit of brown or maybe a little bit of black, and that will bring out some of those beautiful undertones that are within the wood. This one you can see, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's definitely pulled a little bit more pink than I wanted it to. So we played around with it and we added in a little bit of yellow, a little bit of black and brown, and then I think that this came out really nice. We really wanted this to have like a driftwood, aged kind of feel and be really light. But this is also a really beautiful option that would be within the same shade if we wanted to go darker on this white oak sample. If you don't have access to a cabinet shop or somebody that's going to be able to make custom stains for you, don't worry, you can easily go down to Sherwin-Williams and they will make custom stains for you. This is an awesome service that they provide. They have their base colors, but then they can tint different colors to match whatever you're trying to make. So if you are looking for a specific color of stain, Sherwin-Williams is a great option for you. I also really like this company, General Finishes. They have this flat out flat sealer, which is what we've used on our doors because it kept the wood completely matte without altering the color. I really like this brand. They have lots of different colors of stains. I think that sometimes when you go to the store and you just get, like if you go to the hardware store and you just get a basic stain that is stocked, a lot of the times the wood turns out really red or really orange or really yellow. You can see that's what happened here. This is one of the first things I ever did before I knew all of this stuff and this came out a little bit orange. So you can see that it's worth it to get a couple samples and really test the different stains. Test them in your house because the light's going to be different. So don't just test it in the store. Take it home and see what it really looks like in the light in your own house before you start staining your furniture. From species to species, wood can vary so much so if it's possible, I always suggest getting a sample and then testing out the sample with many different stains to get the perfect color. But oftentimes if you're doing something, say like an old piece of furniture, and you're not even really sure what the species is and you don't have access to that type of wood, 
it can be kind of tricky to get a sample of that. So what I suggest is just flipping the table upside down or whatever project you're working on, maybe it's a chest of drawers, use the inside of the chest of drawers and just do small test samples. It's really important to do a sample before you go all in on a project to make sure that the color is just the way you want it to be. If you're working with a piece of wood and you don't want it to have that like glossy epoxy feel, make sure that you get a matte or satin finish. I really like general finishes for getting a flat finish. Old Barn Milk Paint also makes beautiful stains that are flat. And then if you're getting something custom, say from Sherwin-Williams or your cabinet maker, just ask for a matte finish or something that's not glossy. I think one of my biggest tips is just know that you're not confined to what you can find at the hardware store. There are a lot of different boutique brands that make really beautiful colors that won't turn orange or red. I hope that you found this really helpful if you're refinishing something with stain, or maybe you're staining some doors or furniture in your house. If this was your first time here, I hope that you'll subscribe before you go. And for more interior design ideas, you can visit me at boxwoodavenue.com.